In areas of the country where an expanse of water is near at hand, you will find the Mariner Scouts, one of the many interlocking activities within Girl Scouting. And there's more to it than just learning how to sail a boat. The many crafts inherent to the sea or to the lakes offer many fascinating hours of apprenticeship. When a Mariner Scout is well versed in nautical ways, she assumes the rating of an old salt. Sincere flattery indeed, and a term highly cherished. Here, as in all phases of scouting, fun with safety is the watchword. And in this modern air-minded age, it is only fitting that girls who have an interest in aviation have an opportunity to become wing scouts. As part of their training, they visit local airports and factories to observe the working operations of flying. This is a natural step for women of tomorrow who will live in a world where private planes will take the place of today's private automobile. Also, it is quite a thrill for a young lady to have the terminology of thrust and torque and wingspan and horsepower on the tip of her tongue. The solid structure of girl scouting is dependent upon the participation of the adult leaders and the troop committee. The entire scout movement is fostered and furthered and put into action by these good citizens. In scouting, community backing and neighborhood interest mean strength and continuity. And the number of Girl Scouts is directly dependent upon the number of adults who invest willingly their time and talents. Today, with our world in an unsettled turmoil of divergent ideologies, with themes of misunderstanding stalking through the minds of insecure people in many lands, an inspirational lesson can be learned from the creed of the Girl Scouts. To help other people at all times. To promote friendship and understanding among my sister scouts the world over. Here at Cooperstown, New York, Girl Guides and Girl Scouts from Canada, the United States, and Brazil met in mutual friendship, and with them, leaders and scout delegates from 28 countries. On this historical site, the girls set about making camp. There was much to be done before their sister scouts from other lands arrived, and everything had to be in good order, scout style. Finally, the morning came. Their camp was ready when the first buses rolled down the road. These were thrilling moments of anticipation, for this meeting had been planned for a long time. Our girls had been eager for the honor of playing host. And in Brazil, 5,000 miles to the south, senior guides had the honor of representing their country at the Cooperstown camp. In Canada, it had been the same story. And with the delegates from 28 other lands, well, the girls knew the eyes of scouts everywhere would be watching the events of the next few weeks. In the beginning, as they met and studied the differences in uniform and equipment, there was a feeling of strangeness, but that didn't last long. And differences in speech, though awkward in the first few moments, soon dissolved into good humor and mutual curiosity. After they had located their tent mates, they went off in groups of three to their canvas-covered homes. Three girls, each from a different land and each with a different language, but all bound together in the wreath of understanding and the spirit of scouting. Next day, in dress uniforms, the entire camp stood at attention during the color ceremony, when the three flags were raised high overhead. Each girl had a feeling of pride when her country standard unfurled, because she was, in a very large sense, an ambassador from her country, an ambassador of peace and fellowship. When the delegates from the 28 countries sat down together, it was a meeting of minds and hearts. The Lady Baden-Powell of Britain 
widow of the founder of the Girl Guide movement, which was the inspiration for all Girl Scouting, made her personal pilgrimage to the meeting. These women, the international leaders of the organization, recognized their grave responsibility. But they also found time to spend many hours in camp with the girls. Some of the scouts had prepared a lunch, and flapjacks, it seems, have an international appeal. At the tables, they exchanged many stories of scouting experiences. But the Brazilian girls, with their native costumes and instruments, had a real treat in store for the whole camp, the highlight of a glorious outing. must come to an end, and all too soon. But the girls in the Cooperstown camp will always treasure the friendships they had found. But even more, those who were there learned the wisdom of fellowship, working together, living together, in one tent, or one camp, or one world. And to the future, we proudly dedicate these girls and their international sisters the world over. Their years of scouting are a foundation upon which we can build the better world of tomorrow. Our investment in the years ahead is represented by what they have learned, that a Girl Scout's honor is to be trusted. A Girl Scout is loyal. It is her duty to be useful and to help others. She is a friend to all and a sister to every other Girl Scout. She obeys orders, is cheerful, she is thrifty. A Girl Scout is clean in thought, word, and deed. These laws of scouting unite a future generation throughout the world, represent a great coming together of people, a mighty force of tolerance and friendship against misunderstanding and hate. They march forward. They carry our prayers and our high hopes as women of tomorrow. <laughs>